And Mayor Daryl Steinberg with us. Mayor, good morning. How are you? I'm doing good. Good morning, guys. Hope you're, you and your families are, are safe and hanging in there, too. Yeah, we're doing that. We're trying. We're doing our part. I know that's got to be a challenge for you to not only practice what you're preaching, to, to stay safe and to be responsible, but to oversee this community that, for the most part, may be doing their part, but we always know there's a few that aren't. That's got to be a challenge for you. Well, it's a very different experience, but no complaints. I mean, I, I'm I'm working from home, but I'm learning all the new technology, Zoom and everything else, and uh, it's not uh, the easiest way to be mayor of the city for sure, but mostly I'm just focused on the people, and especially those that are hurting at this time, you know, the small businesses, the workers. I'm worried about the low-income people and the homeless people, you know, food security, all the other things. But look, Sacramento always rises to the occasion, and, and you're right. There's been a few instances where people are not practicing the physical distancing that's now required, but by and large, people are not only doing the right thing, but they're also helping each other, and that's all I can ask for. And But like you guys, I, I, I can't deal with no sports on television. I just am um, going crazy, but, you know... We'll get through that together, too. Mr. Mayor, I know you're busy, and, and we do appreciate you coming on. I I really wanted to talk to you. I don't even know if this is in your job description, so you'll have to help me with this. But I, like I think a lot of people, um, you know, the time for – everybody knows by this point what we're going through. Everybody knows about social distancing. You've all done – everyone's done such a great job in getting the message out there. Yet I hear story after story after story of people playing basketball at the park, people having house parties. Um, Elk Grove a couple days ago just closed down all their parks. For me, I'm very frustrated as a citizen that we're not taking more in-your-face steps legally and, and enforcing those rules more. Are we, A, getting to a point where we in Sacramento uh, whether it's law enforcement or whomever, will step that up more? And B, is it in your your purview? Can you drop the hammer and close down all those parks, or is that a bigger thing than, than just the mayor of Sacramento? Well, it's bigger than the mayor of Sacramento. The city does have ultimate emergency police powers to take those kinds of actions. Uh, and... My sense of the community at this point is that the vast majority of people are, in fact, complying, and that law enforcement is um, cracking down where uh, there are egregious breaches. I'll give you one example. Um, it was in the paper this morning. Cal Expo continued to allow harness racing to go yeah. on, um, and our public health officer, Peter Bielenson, for the count works for the county this came to his attention and he shut that down so that's an example of a very public gathering where uh, obviously the the writers are not maintaining the social distancing by definition and he shut it down I, I don't think we want to go to a place where we are policing this thing except where there are obvious breaches if people are playing basketball the, the the social pressure if you see if you're taking a walk and you see guys or anybody playing basketball go up to them and tell them to knock it off because it, it's I think social pressure will work more than thinking that our law enforcement officers which by the way they're working their hearts out still dealing with real crime that they're going to be able to intervene. Uh, in every single situation where people are not using common sense and following the order. Well, and, and I can't, I want to preface this, you know, I, I've always liked you, Mr. Mayor, and I can't imagine uh, you're on a balance beam right now, and I, and I totally get that. I, I couldn't do the job. My only pushback and concern there is I, I've thought the same thing, social pressure. But what I'm worried about, and I'm reticent to even verbalize it, is that People are very frustrated right now. This is something they've never dealt with before, and they're losing not just jobs and money, but they're losing family members. The frustration will continue to mount, and you and I both know this thing's probably going to stay for at least the foreseeable future. 
Here's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about social pressure. Um, that's a very broad term because social pressure could be, um, hey, guys, knock it off. But we all know that social pressure can escalate to vigilantism. What I'm concerned with is that if the state and the city and the county don't step up and lock this thing down, we're going to start seeing people exercising their frustrations publicly, and that's something none of us want. So I, I understand where you're coming from right now, but I would imagine... I would imagine that is a malleable thought you're having and that as you continue it is. to observe. Okay, okay, okay. And and of course we are. And, you know, we, we do get calls on the city's 311 line where people are calling in where they are seeing people not practicing the physical distancing. And we're taking all of those calls. And where there is an instance where law enforcement is on the scene or on the spot, I know that they are telling people to to do the right thing here. Um, it, but in the end, it does rely on us. We cannot police every single block of the city here. Sure. And, and that's just not realistic. And so the public messaging, the social pressure is not just individuals seeing people who are violating the order and, and intervening if, if uh, I think that's appropriate, but it is the continued public messaging here this is about lives and, and and your frustration is correct because where people are violating the orders they're potentially putting themselves and other people at great risk and so we continue to evaluate the balance all of the time dave i promise you and the and the emphasis is always on protecting the public health of the people that's why we're doing all of this and we're going to continue to Mayor, Mayor Daryl Steinberg with us. I can't even imagine on your list, you kind of started it out with, uh, you know, uh, a list there of uh, the homeless population to schools being shut down, public safety, supplies for, for those that may be uh, in need at hospitals right now, small businesses and the impact that's having there. Where do you even begin on, like, what's number one on your list? Because those are all probably vying for equal amount of time. Well, first of all, I have a great team and it's not just me. You've got eight city council colleagues. I've got a great staff. The city uh, staff has been tremendous. I mean, everybody is stepping up in a big way. I do divide my day by category. I mean, in some of the categories, food security has emerged as a major issue in the community because uh, seniors are shut in <clears throat> in low-income housing complexes. They can't go out shopping. Families uh, we are finding are sharing the students' free and reduced lunch because if they've been laid off uh, or have fewer hours, it's tougher to get food. The food bank has huge shortages. So we're raising money to help fund the food bank. Homelessness, as you said, is a big, big issue because this is where the spread of the disease could be most rapid. And so we've got a plan we'll unveil with the county in the next several days to be very aggressive about that. Um, small business, we have worked with all our chambers and we've helped stand up a one-stop shop for small businesses to be able to navigate through the new federal and state loan programs. There's a lot of help out there for people. And so my days, um, you know, I go from <clears throat> call to call. I, I have very few public events, although a couple of times I have been out at safe distance. And I'm just trying, we're, we're really the conveners in chief, if nothing else, to try to help organize around the variety of issues where the community needs help. Mayor Daryl Steinberg joining us. Just a, a couple more, Mr. Mayor. I know you're busy. Uh, on that point of priorities, you know, I, I have little ones. A lot of people listening do as well, and I'm looking at our text line right now. The one that, that, that really jumps out are the seniors uh, with graduation. I look at I look at the playing field, Mr. Mayor, and I have a hard time imagining school is going to resume this year. And I know you're not here to make any announcements, and I know it's not completely your call. You're you're obviously talking to uh, so many others on this, but your thoughts right now: Do you see a path? where we're going to get schools resumed this, people have been saying calendar year, I think that's wrong. Do you see a path where we're going to see schools resume before next school year comes September, October? Well, education, of course, will continue through distance learning. And I know every district and throughout the state is trying to figure out how to 
deal with the, the digital divide and the fact that some kids just don't have the same access. But the education will continue in that way. I, I don't see a returning to the physical school spaces before the end of this year. I, I don't. Before the end of uh, the, the traditional school year. And I think yesterday the superintendent of public instruction, the governor, made that pretty clear as well. What I do hope is, depending upon the virus itself, is that summertime becomes school time again, if that's safe. Yeah. And that the legislature and the governor find a way to fund some form of mandatory summer school because for all kids, but especially kids who are behind or are disadvantaged, to miss six months of school, even with a couple of months being done imperfectly uh, through the digital means and, and the digital divide just is not going to be enough. So. I um, I think there's a lot of decisions left to be made, but right now, as, there, as people have said, the virus dictates the timing, and we've got to protect the public health first. Um, the schools issue is is huge, and you're right. So many lost moments, graduations, celebrations, rites of passage, they're going to be hard to make up. Uh, but somehow, we have got to also focus as Sacramentans on all of the silver linings when this is done and even as we're going through this you know to appreciate the small things to appreciate each other to appreciate what it's what it means to be active and involved in your community in any way i I think we'll never take any of that for granted again mayor steinberg with us last question mr mayor and uh Again, I want to. I, I just want to applaud you and, and the council and everyone working on this. You, you, you know, Governor Cuomo is on right now on the TV in front of me. You see what they're going through and, and the job that's been done by Governor Newsom and and, and everyone. You, et cetera, has been so fantastic. One thing I know we've been reading about. I, I know that uh, the Kings and uh, their president, Matina Colacatronis, everybody over there, along with you, Angie uh, Ashby, and. Uh, you guys have been working very hard behind the scenes on the possibility of turning the old Arco uh, into a, a makeshift uh, hospital. And, and I was just curious, could you update us on where that is and your confidence on getting that done? Sure. Well, there's been no final decision made, but it's no secret that working with the state and the Federal Army Corps of Engineers, our city and the Kings, that we are all working cooperatively to ensure that Sacramento and Northern California has sufficient number of hospital beds given the projected surge in Sacramento and in Northern California. Now, our numbers have been pretty good in Sacramento thus far, but we are far from out of the woods here um, in terms of knowing whether or not we're going to avoid the surge, but we want to be prepared. The, The beauty there's a beauty here of Sacramento and California being ahead of the rest of the nation in terms of our stay-at-home orders is we do have these weeks and we're using them to prepare for what may happen mid-April, end of April, throughout the month of May. And certainly Sleep Train Arena, uh, because of its size and its space, is an obvious potential location for hundreds of additional hospital bed. So everybody is working on that, but there hasn't been a decision made yet. Again, thank you. Yes. Uh, I know we all know you're busy. Um, I, I, I hope uh, you, you always keep the lines open. We'd love to bring you back periodically uh, when you have time. I think people like hearing what you're, you know, even if it's not all good news, I think people like hearing the mayor uh, talk about what's going on. It comforts people to a point. And I, 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 we all appreciate your time for sure. You know, guys, I'd come on at any time, and I just want to thank you for uh, talking to the people and, and, you know, talking sports here because, um, you know, people need to, we all need our diversions, and i got to tell you, there have been some great old Super Bowls on uh, as I'm working <laughs> here. Um, you know, and, and by the way, Game 7 of the 2001 World Series between Arizona and the Yankees, I recommend it highly to people. You know, I, I have these things on as, as I'm sitting here working once in a while. So, um, you know, let, let's, stay, 
let's stay cool and let's just stay this course and continue to do what we do as Sacramentans, which is to show the way. And I look forward to seeing you guys in person sometime soon. That sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate it. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.